All right, guys, as we jump into this project, the first thing we want to do is remove the disc brake rotor. That is to make the project easier as well as to protect your disc brake rotor from getting contaminated. So just start by removing those uh, six bolts. Next, you're going to want to remove this um, rubber grommet. It's a seal that keeps the dust out. Uh, the best way to do it is by pinching it on the sides, trying to get a gap there that will allow you to remove it. Uh, be careful if you decide to use um, a screwdriver or something like that so that you don't damage the, uh, the rubber or uh, damage the way that it seals. After you've got the uh, rubber grommet off and the disc rotor off, it's time to remove the nuts that hold the axle on. You're going to do this by using two 17 millimeter wrenches and uh, grabbing a hold of the nuts on the outside. The easiest way to do this is to, with your left hand, twist clockwise while holding steady with your right hand, though you might find that it's stiff and requires you to um, either switch that up with the right hand or the left hand, just trying to find uh, which one of those bolts is going to break first. Okay, after you've removed the outer nut, it now exposes the cone nut. Just grab that with your fingers and unscrew it. it should come off pretty easily after you've done that you'll now be able to remove the axle from the other side of the hub once you get the axle out this is what you should be looking at just a series of uh, balls that are in a race there underneath the um, kind of the metal cap that metal cap does not come out so you don't want to pry on it you're going to have to remove the ball bearings from within the hub in order to clean them up and then get them back in. A great way to get those uh, ball bearings out is to use a small magnet and attach it to a thin Allen key, a small sized Allen key. Then the magnet uh, pulls the balls out without you having to reach in there and lose them down inside the hub or anything like that. So it's kind of a little hack, uh, easy way to get the ball bearings out. So small magnet on an Allen key and you can start to pull them out. It's important that you keep track of your project and especially those little metal balls um, by putting them in a safe place. I like to use little plastic containers. For instance, right here is the uh, plastic container that my disc brakes came in. It doesn't matter, just a way to keep everything together so that you can count uh, how many balls that you have and um, not lose them rolling around on the floor. Be amazed at uh, how easy it is to lose these little balls. After you've removed all of the ball bearings, you want to thoroughly clean the hub, getting all of the grease and stuff out from both the outside as well as underneath the, uh, the metal caps there. After you've cleaned the hub, now it's time to start putting it back together. I like to use a, a small paintbrush and dip it into my grease and then basically paint grease onto the inside of the bearing race there. Uh, this is basically what you should look like when you're done. You see that the grease is holding the bearings in place. This will work out well for you as you um, grease both sides of the bearing, uh, both sides of the hub, trying to keep the balls from not falling out while you're doing that. After you've greased both sides of the hub and inserted the ball bearings back, make sure you use the even number of both sides. It's now time to uh, reinsert your axle. You just slide it in. Uh, notice here that we have the fixed side of the axle being inserted into the disc brake side of the hub. After you've inserted the axle, now it's time to put the uh, nuts and bolts back on. So this is the view from the non-disc brake side of the hub. And you can see first we've put in the cone nut followed by the washer and then now the outside nut of the retaining nut uh, goes on last. Now comes what is essentially the trickiest part of working with uh, a loose bearing or a cone bearing type system. In that, in order to make the uh, axle stay in there firmly, you don't want to just tighten down the outside nut because that will end up binding the whole system. So what you have to do is tighten down 
that inner nut, the, the one with the race on it, the cone nut, and you want to tighten it down just a tad bit tight, and then with, screw down the outer nut until they touch, and then holding that outer nut with the 17 millimeter wrench, you want to grab the inner of the cone nut with the 15 millimeter cone wrench. And it has to be a thin wrench, which is why we call them cone wrenches. And what you're gonna do is hold that outer wrench steady and then back the cone wrench out until it locks tight against the outer nut. Chances are that when you do this, you're gonna back it out too far and then the axle's gonna have some play in it. It usually takes a couple times in order to get the right tension uh, before the hub's, the hub's ready to go. So don't be afraid to undo it and then start again um, and, and over tightening that cone nut and then tightening down the outer nut against it and then holding that outer nut and then using the cone wrench to back the cone nut out against that outer nut so that it locks into place. And that is basically how you would service the uh, specialized stout front hub that uses um, an open ball bearing system. Hope this video helped you and uh, get out and ride your bikes.